Gas fees. You're probably hearing a lot about gas fees going up at the moment, hitting record prices. But today we're not going to be talking about those gas fees, petrol prices, but instead we're going to be talking about ETH gas fees. So the gas fee is like the transaction fee that you pay on the Ethereum network. I'm gonna break that down for you today. Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Rushok and I thought today was a perfect time to talk to you about ETH gas fees because tomorrow, as of the time of launching this video, my NFT project Rushox will launch. So I'm really excited for that. If you haven't already checked that out, go to the Discord down below. It's a NFT project that's gonna help you with your crypto NFT taxes, business taxes or business growth, all those different things. So make sure you go and check that out. And today I'm going to talk to you about gas fees because they're relevant to my project because you need to understand them if you're going to mint one of my NFTs. So gas fees are pretty much the transaction fee for transacting on the Ethereum network. So the Ethereum network requires a transaction fee for transactions to go through. Now these gas fees can vary in price, which I'll get into, but that's the main thing you understand is that you've got to pay this transaction fee to be able to transact on the network. And so you see this little equation here, but pretty much the fee you're gonna pay is made up of the gas unit, uh, which is also known as the gas limit, and you're timesing that by the base fee plus a tip. So I'll break down each of those for you to have an understanding of look what makes up a gas fee, why they sometimes can get really high, and why you need to pay attention to what they are purely because you need to understand, well, how is it gonna impact my transaction? What will happen if I don't have enough gas? And three, when is the best time to actually transact? So the first one here that you need to understand is gas limits. And so the gas limit is the max amount of gas you're willing to spend on the transaction. And you're able to adjust that, but you need to understand that different types of interactions are gonna require different amounts of gas. So you wanna make sure that your limit is gonna at least cover the minimum required. Because if you don't have enough gas, the transaction will fail and whatever you paid in gas, you'll lose. Now it will depend on what type of transaction you're doing. So something like maybe moving funds from one wallet to another, maybe a low transaction, whereas interacting with a smart contract will likely require more gas. So normally if you're interacting with a smart contract, for instance, you're buying an NFT, the project will have set what they estimate the gas limit needed to be. So you can adjust that if need be, but normally that should be set. But as long as you've got enough gas, your transaction will use whatever it needs. So you wanna make sure you've set that limit high enough that it's gonna cover what it actually needs. And then the base fee is gonna be based on how busy the network is at the time. So this is what differs. So this can normally be referred to in terms like way, way, it's just gonna depend. And obviously you wanna try and do some kind of conversion back to your base rate of currency or back into ETH so you have an understanding. But this is what varies because when there is high demand, this goes higher. When there is low of demand, it goes lower. Makes sense. So this is where trying to time when the gas price is low means trying to time when the network isn't as congested. Therefore, you have to pay less fees to get your transaction process. And then there's tips or priority fees. And this is pretty much paying additional to try and get your transaction processed in front of others. So if we have a base price and you go, no, I really want my transaction to jump to the front of the queue, people will pay a higher amount of gas fee. They'll add an extra tip onto this so that their transaction is a priority. So this can quite happen when NFT projects launch and people are trying to mint them and the higher you're paying in gas fees, the more you're willing to pay, the higher you jump in that queue to try and jump about others and get your transaction process first. And this is what is known in the industry as a gas war. The biggest thing to remember is if your transaction fails, whether that's because you don't have a high enough gas limit or you don't have the funds to pay for all of the gas that you've needed or whether you someone else has beaten you to the punch and they've minted something first, for instance, you will lose whatever gas fees you have used up. So that's the risk with using the Ethereum network and the risk with the gas fees being quite high. If a transaction fails, you're going to lose that fee. So sometimes the transaction fees can be quite high and people can get burnt where they lose a significant amount of money on failed transaction fees. So a few things to remember is that if you're minting an NFT project, for instance, you need to have an understanding of what the gas limit is for that. Have an understanding of if you know it's gonna be something that's in high demand, understand that you may wanna set your gas priority higher because then you'll jump to the front of the queue and hopefully you'll beat out others that are lower, but do understand you're still risking that you may lose the gas. Or if you're minting something, for instance, that's not as high a priority, maybe you wanna pick the time of day where the gas fees are lower. So there's lots of cool trackers here. I'll bring a few of them up, but you can see that 
you can see the time of the days where gas is typically lower. And this varies. At the moment, we're lucky that gas fees are quite low, but in the past, gas fees have been incredibly high. I've paid significant amounts to mint NFTs in the past. So having an understanding of how they work, but at a real basic level, you can refer to them. They're like transaction fees. So no different to back in the day, or if you use a credit card, you may pay a transaction fee on top. This is the transaction fee for interacting with the Ethereum network. I hope that has been helpful. It's only a basic video. There's a lot more advanced videos here on YouTube that explain gas fees on a much more technical basis. I just wanna make a basic video for those people that are considering minting one of the Rooshox NFTs that you're going to need to allow for gas you know, I'm not 100% sure what this is going to be because it's going to vary at the time of the day. I'll put some articles up and keep an eye on the socials to understand where I think gas is at or when it might be a good time to buy. I appreciate you watching. I really hope you do go and check out the Rishox NFT project or at least hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and I'll talk to you again soon.